Hello everyone. We are going to do this, uh, talk about this topic, which is the volume of a parallel pipette. And what the heck is a parallel pipette? Well, it's a three-dimensional parallelogram and we uh, see that this, this three-dimensional parallelogram called a parallel pipette is formed by the vectors A, B, and C. So they form this a parallel pipette. And what we are going to do is uh, show that there is a formula for the volume given here. So, okay, so, so far, what I've already done, as I've said, told you, this is a parallel pipette, and this is a formula to find the volume. You, for many people, that's enough. And then you go on to examples of where we find the volume using this formula. I'm going to right now do a proof. Some people say, okay, I don't really want the proof, or maybe I'll read about the proof later in the book or something. But now I'm going to do the proof that this is, in fact, the volume of the parallel pipette. And this is, let me talk about this a little bit. A dot B cross C is called the triple product. And it is a number. It's a scalar. And it possibly is negative or it could be positive and so after we find that number the triple product we take the absolute value and that gives volume volume should be positive okay so here is my proof but maybe that's already enough for you is is here's the formula that's what a parallel pipe head. go to the next video and do some examples where we where we uh, find the volume but here's our proof okay so volume I'm going to assume this was that, is that this is true. Volume equals area of the base times height for this three-dimensional figure. So I'm assuming that is true without proof. Now we've talked about another video that the area of the base. Is what it's a the area of a pal parallelogram formed by vectors b and c and that is given by a formula which we did in another video it's given by b cross c magnitude so that's I don't know, just one of the, the things that we, we, we showed it, uh, before. Okay, um, I don't have a video on that. I showed it in class. But anyway, okay. So that's, that's, that's the area of the base. So let's just even put that over here. So the area of that base is equal to magnitude B cross C. Okay, then, so far so good. I mean, I didn't prove anything. I proved it before in class, it's in the book. Okay, that's the area of the base. And what we're gonna do is now find the height. Okay, how can we find the height? Well, first of all, the cross product is a vector. And that vector is perpendicular, orthogonal, we say, to both vectors B and C. So it's perpendicular to both. And actually, don't wanna really get into that much, but because of the right-hand rule, we curl our fingers from B to C, and our thumb is going to point up. Uh, if I draw a hand, that's really going to be difficult. But anyway, uh, that looks like nothing. Okay, that's that's terrible. But if you if you curl your fingers around B to C, and then your thumb is going to stick up. Anyway, that's that's why it's B cross C is going this way and not the other way down there. Okay, so anyway, it's B cross C, like that. Um, but actually, for this for this formula, you could reverse and do C cross B, and you, you would get the same answer, actually, because we do absolute value. Okay. Uh, but anyway, um, so B cross C is this vector that's perpendicular to B and C, and now here's A, and what we want is we want to find the height, which is a um, this length as shown here. Okay, so we want this lake there. 
And what that is, it's the projection of A onto B cross C. So we can see there's a projection there. And there's a formula for that projection. So uh, I have to zoom out a little bit. So the height, the height um, is, I call it little h, h equals the scale or projection of A onto B cross C. And in fact, if I did C cross B, I would get uh, the same answer. But it's this is a little bit not correct, which of course a little bit not correct means not correct. It's actually the absolute value. Let's write that down here, but that is, so there's, in math, we don't like just writing words. We want to do a bunch of, put it into symbols to be more precise. So it's the projection, which we call uh, the scalar projection, which is denoted in our book, C O M P for component. And it's, it's um, A onto B cross C. And I'm going to have to do the absolute value because that uh, scalar projection can be a negative number. Okay. And then there is a formula for this scalar projection of A onto B cross C. Okay, it is A dot, uh, I better not forget the absolute value. Okay, it is A dot B cross C divided by length of B cross C. That is the formula that is using the formula for the scalar projection of A onto B. B cross C. So um, here's an aside. The, the, the scalar projection, let's use uh, vectors V and W, which is not the, ve the, the ones they use in the book, so that might be sort of difficult, but um, okay, I won't do that. I'll use A and B. The book has a formula B onto A, and this is A dot B divided by, okay, length of A, I gotta get that correct. The thing is, it's a little bit confusing for me to write that formula down because I'm using the same letters A and B, but they're used in, they're mixed up here in this in this statement here. They're, I mean, they're, they're not, they're sort of swapped and moved around, so it could be a little form difficult. So, so we're doing A onto the vector B cross C. It's almost like I should put parentheses there to make sense of that. Okay, so this, so if I, let me just keep going on this. This is going to be um, length of A, or I mean, sorry, yeah, magnitude of A, B cross C, also called the triple product. And then the denominator, I have magnitude, which is a positive number, with inside this absolute value. So I'll just write it like this. Okay, and so then the volume, again, gives us V equals A times H, the area of the base times the height. So V, I need another piece of paper here. Um, so V is equal to A, which we calculated from above, is um, B cross, magnitude B cross C. And then the height is A dot B cross C divided by B cross C and magnitude and or absolute value, yeah, magnitude. And we get cancellation and it looks like we're done. And we'll do an example, some examples in the next video. And in the next video, when I do an example, I'll explain how we calculate this. So, okay, you have the formula. How are we going to calculate this? So I'll do another video with an example. I don't want to make my, um, you know, my, my each video too long. And okay, so um, that will finish the video. All right, take care. Bye.